based in Richmond office. I have the uh, honor and privilege of introducing uh, Ka Katie Yen. Katie Yen is the uh, training coordinator at the Jack A. Proctor Virginia Building Code Academy within the Department of Housing and Community Development. Prior to joining DHCD in November 2021, she managed the professional development programs at the Irrigation Association. Katie is also a part-time teacher for the Richmond Chinese School. And in her free time, Katie enjoys uh, recreating her grandmother's Hakka recipes. Uh, the Hakka is a subgroup of the Han Chinese. Without further ado, everyone, Katie. Thanks, Carton. Um, so let me actually share. Can I share my screen? Yes, you, you sure can. can. You use uh -huh. the uh, present. It's in the middle uh, at the bottom. Okay. Can you? Can everyone see my um, screen? Yes. Okay. All right. My, my name is Katie Yen, and I am the training coordinator at the Virginia Building Code Academy. Um, so my dog actually just started <laughs> to um, to be very verbal right now. Um, if you hear anything, please excuse that. Um, so today we are going to talk about what the Virginia Building Code Academy is, uh, what kind of programs we offer, and um, what everybody can benefit from them. Okay, the Jackie Proctor Virginia Building Code Academy delivers administrative and technical code training programs for a mandated statewide professional certification and various um, code enforcement roles. Um, it is our mission to promote smart, safe, uniform code enforcement to members of the Virginia's um, code enforcement community. We do so by um, providing required education and training to earn and maintain state mandated certifications. Uh, we issue and manage certification as well as um, maintain records of code official certification and training. And that we, um, by providing those um, services, uh, we support the code community through transfer um, uh, knowledge and skills. Okay, so um, all of our training programs are available for everyone. Um, however, the um, primary audience is employees of localities who enforce the uh, USBC. Um, they are permit technicians, uh, plan reviewers, inspectors, um, building, fire, or property maintenance officials. But again, if you are uh, any third party or private organization and even interested parties are, um, you can take any of our training programs. Uh, so for, for code enforcement personnel employed by a locality, there are no tuition costs for you. However, uh, for non-code enforcement individual, classes are open for you based on availability and um, to as you may apply. We offer 30 certifications. There are many of them. Um, they are in, uh, they, they are certifications for uh, building official roles, uh, residential and commercial building inspectors. They are certifications for fire and property maintenance inspectors and um, plan examiners. So to achieve our certifications, um, we have uh, three main categories of mandated trainings. But again, if you are just looking to um, learn about code and but not really achieving a certification, you can, uh, these uh, are not mandated. These are um, really, if you're interested, you can um, reach out reach out to us and we will show you how to get into any of these programs. But for, um, for anyone that are looking to achieve a certification, 
um, the technical and non-technical certification courses um, are required to obviously earn a certification. Um, and also, um, also the continuing educations are required for certi certificate holders. Uh, certificate holders are required to submit 16 hours of continuing education every two years. In addition to that, the coaching training is also uh, mandated for all building and code, uh, and building and fire code enforcement personnel. Um, so the code chain training and uh, continuing educations, it, it just it depends. Um, it doesn't so for for those two trainings, um, it doesn't matter how many certification you hold, um, the requirements are the same. And we have uh, 22 unique certification training classes. Uh, the core class is uh, is highlighted because uh, it is a prerequisite for all the other certification classes. These classes are uh, mostly offered at least three times a year. Um, however, the core class, because it has a higher demand, we offer it uh, up to six times a year. The, cl the classes are taught by um, volunteer, mostly in small, mostly volunteer instructors. Um, and let me talk a, a little bit more about the core class. Um, like I said earlier, it is the prerequisite for all the other certification classes. Um, it talks. It, it is an introduction to building and fire codes, and it talks about uh, the history of codes in Virginia. Uh, it also teaches you the customer service for a code professional and the administrative and legal aspects of um, code enforcement. Okay, the coaching training. We currently have 11 coaching training modules. Uh, these are um, mandated for certification um, for, for certificate holders. Depending on which certification the individual holds, uh, the modules vary. The required modules vary. Continuing education. So we, um, in order to ensure officials keep up with code and industry trends, we required um, certificate holders um, to earn up uh, to earn 16 hours of continuing education every two years. These are subjects that are relevant to building code enforcement and a code development. The Virginia Building Code Academy offers other um, programs. Um, so we have our own instructors um, and uh, for that, we have the training, train the trainer program as well as the um, ongoing instructor development programs. We also have the amusement device inspector mentorship. Uh, our programs are um, developed are, are delivery uh, delivered in various uh, platforms. We have in person and virtual classroom classes and also um, online self-paced learning. Um, some of our um, coaching training and um, other additional trainings are also offered in a webinars format. So these trainings could vary from multiple days, a single day, or one to four hour webinars. So why should you attend our trainings? Um, it is it is the code officials' responsibility to protect the public health, safety, and welfare in relationship to the built environment through effective um, code enforcement. So, uh, for builders and con uh, constructors, uh, this is an opportunity for you to expand your code knowledge, so you can work, uh, so you know what the inspector look for during inspections. Um, so together, 
you and the inspectors could um, ensure the buildings are safe for your clients in the community. Um, the, and also it is another item to add to your bucket list. Um, some people would like to earn certifications um, or uh, we have we have uh, people that we have code officials that have earned all of the certification we offer. Yes. Okay, so where do you start? Um, so our core class and coaching training, um, they are uh, depending if you are looking for a certification. Um, the core class, if you are looking for a certification, the core class. Um, is your starting point. Like I said, previ like I said pre previously, um, the uh, the core class is the prerequisite for all the other certification classes. Um, so that will get you started for for the training. Um, and then it's also the introduction to code and code enforcement. Um, but if you are not looking to achieve certifications, but want to learn about the current codes. The coaching training is available to you at no cost. Um, they are self-paced modules online, so um, you can work through them at your own convenience. But um, just a reminder, our programs are, um, Are available to you to everyone, but the certified officials and professionals seeking certification have priorities uh, for to attend these trainings. So, how do you register for uh, BBCA classes? Uh, depending on which programs you are um, looking to attend, uh, we have instructor lead uh, instructor led trainings that you will have to register in the online registration system. Um, and the other self-paced trainings, you can access them through the Commonwealth of Virginia Learning Center. Um, and and there, there are some programs that you may need both accounts, but if you have any questions, um, you can um, give us a call or email us. Uh, we will give you um, clear instructions on, um, on these registrations. Okay, so if you're interested in achieving certification, um, there are three simple steps. First, you would complete the core class, and then you will also need to uh, complete the certification class or classes, depending on which program, um, and also the also passing the exam and also depending on which certification you're looking to achieve you may need to pass multiple exams okay so if you have a certification um you you could consider a career in code enforcement so just so you know um virginia is a leader in the code enforcement industry and uh, by becoming a code enforcement, it, it, is a, it is really a good career outlook for you and a um, career achievement. Uh, and many code enforcement employers uh, require inspectors to have uh, work in the construction trades and have the abilities to read blueprints and uh, understand the construction mathematics. So really you already have all the qualified experience. Um, here are our resources for you. First one is the uh, Virginia Code Collections. Here you will be able to access all the Virginia Building Code. Uh, you'll be able to uh, access or uh, purchase them online. And if you are working with um, inspectors um, and want, need to verify their information, you could go to the Verify a Certification um, page. And if you need to contact someone directly, um, you can go to the directory. There you will be able to find the contact information. 
Um, and if you need uh, specific information about EARNA certification, a lot of resources are in the EARNA certification page. Um, and then we have the VBCA website. So um, all of the above um, links are also available through the VBCA website. Um, if you're interested in anything, um, take a look on that site. Um, there are plenty of resources for you. Then we also have the International Code Council um, website. Uh, the, the Virginia, the, sorry, the International Code Council, uh, they host the uh, Virginia Code Collections. So um, the books are actually on that website. Um, the ICC is also uh, our exam providers. So if you are looking to um, take the exam, you will actually need to register through the ICC website. Okay, so the Virginia Building Code Academy is consists of six staff members. Uh, we have um, Sandy Morris. She is the Academy Director. Um, I'm pretty sure many of you already know Sandy. Um, and we have Tabitha Bailey. She is our Administrative Assistant. Um, Krista and I, we are both the Training Coordinators. And we also have Rajan Ng and Stephen Reynolds as our um, training developers. Um, so if you have any questions about this presentation um, and if you're interested in any of those programs, um, give us a call. Our number is listed uh, on this page. Um, and also, you can also email us at vbca at dhcd.virginia.gov. That's all I have for this presentation. If anybody have any questions? Katie, so actually I do. Um, you and I have talked offline about the core class and, and you know, what a great kind of jumping off point that is. Mm -hmm. um, can you talk a little bit about how, is it a multi-day class? Is it a one, one day class? How many hours it is? Yes, yeah, so it is um, it is a four day class. Um, we offer it online and also in person. Um, so depending on the time of the year, it could be in Northern Virginia, it could be in Richmond, or um, it could also be somewhere in the eastern part of Virginia. Um, and I I believe yes, it is a, a twenty four hour class. So uh, be prepared to pretty much a full week of training. Sherry, if I may. Yes. This is Sandy, Sandy Morris. Um, uh, uh, Katie did a great job. Thank you, Katie. I do want to, um, I do want to add in, I can supplement what, you know, the information Katie provided around core. Um, Core, I really think for this target audience would be a really great place to start if they wanted to build a foundation of the history of the codes, the legal aspects of enforcing the code, um, and how the different codes connect to one another. And I think I also would give you a good overview of the role of the code official in the um, building inspection uh, process. And so I think for the roles that you all serve, CORE would probably be a great place to start. And CORE is a prerequisite to take all classes, regardless of whether or not you're seeking certification. So, so if you were interested in taking, let's say, um, the existing building inspection class or the property maintenance class or, or any of those classes that Katie showed you on the screen, uh, core, is, core is the prereq to take all of those, and it would lay you the foundation for the technical aspects of the code uh, before you got into that class. Um, and so, as Katie said, it, we do offer that class six times a year. We offer it both um, through our virtual classroom and our in-person classroom. 
And uh, we will hope to be back in person in April, but of course it's also tentative based on you know what happens. Um, but that is our goal. You can, um, Katie is a great resource to, you know, get the schedule and to walk you through the registration process. And, and as she said, there is a tuition uh, fee that is involved. Uh, it is um, depending on whether you are taking the virtual classroom or the uh, in-person classroom, it is between uh, 250 and uh, 250 and three, 50 or 325 and Katie you can correct me if I'm wrong on that but it's something around the 250 to 350 range and if you are in person and you need lodging that's an, an additional $90 um, uh, $90 a night that we coordinate the provide all the logistics for so you don't have to seek lodging yourself we take care of that but uh, I just wanted to add some of that supplemental information to core to your uh, information on core uh, Katie and Sandy, there was a question. Um, can nonprofits take the training class with no cost? Uh, not at this time. There is a cost because um, our target audience is not um, our target audience is our code um, enforcement community as mandated by the by the legislation to provide the certification. Uh, but we also have a line in, in our um, regulations that state that it's available to interested parties um, but there is a there is a tuition associated it is a, it is a very nominal tuition if you were to compare that cost to other trainings out there uh, but we do have one but you know we're certainly open to a conversation if there's a situation that arises but at this time um, the blanket answer is a tuition applies to non-code enforcement jurisdictional employees Thank you. And now I, I have a follow up question. So um, I have been to your website. It's amazing. You guys all have to check that out. And we will be posting those links on our rehab workshop website um, after this training. The property maintenance is I was kind of looking through the different things. Um, can you just kind of touch on what that might cover? Because that kind of looks more close i guess closely related to some of the things that our rehab specialists do mm -hmm. katie do you want to take it or would you like me to take that one i'm sorry if you don't mind could you answer? no i don't mind no um so property main the property maintenance class is really i find one of my most interesting classes because there's a lot of photographs and i just love photo i just love seeing and you know what's happening but that class really focuses on um the requirements of property maintenance of what are the requirements to maintain your structure in safe um being and so it goes through all of the codes responsible for ensuring that the um structure is sound it's healthy uh and it meets the current code requirements and so there will be a lot of um focus on like what is not what is um just ugly versus what is a code issue um, i use my house as an example when i bought my house it didn't have any flashing and so i had to have the the contractor come out and put the flashing back on before you know i would agree to move in and i saw the flashing and i brought my code guy my code friend guy out and he looked at it and he said well we don't regulate ugly he said it's done it's done properly it's just not attractive so um so you learn a lot about those two differences and then you also, it also gives you the opportunity to uh, gain an understanding of what the legal process is when a situation is taken to court, when a, la when a landlord is taken to court or when the homeowner is taken because they're refusing to comply with the requirements of the code. Uh, I find it one of our inter most interesting classes just because I really enjoy that, um, that there's a lot of graphics and a lot of involvement um, around around that particular code. And again, it is a 24-hour class as well. Uh, Katie and Sandy, there was a follow-up question. Does uh, membership to the VBCOA provide any reduction in class cost? 
Uh, no, it does not. Um, uh, however, VBCOA does offer a number of classes or a number of education opportunities, not, not to the full like 24 hour comprehensive classes that we do, but they provide many uh, interesting continuing ed classes that are probably relevant. And if you are a member of VBCOA or a member of their regional um, VBCOA, then those are benefits that um, are offered to you. Thank you. There were a few more mm -hmm. comments here. Uh, Mr. Goodwin uh, noted that localities must send uh, send the academy 2% of all building permit costs, which pays for uh, our training. I did not know that. Um, yeah, so to clarify that, the um, when, a, um, cost, when a citizen pulls a permit, when a per permit is pulled, a building um, permit is pulled, 2% of that, or they're charged 2% or 2% of that is sent to the academy to support the um, trainings and the training and certification program. Awesome. Uh, James noted that being a longtime student of the Jack Park Dakota Academy definitely recommends the classes to anyone who wishes to gain knowledge of the enforcement process and expand your technical knowledge. Uh, Amanda asked if someone is accumulating uh, classes with an eye on some sort of certification, is there a length of time in which the classes must be completed? Yes. So our classes are good for four years. So you would have to obtain certification within four years. And we what um, we didn't really expand on was that in addition to taking the classes, you would also have to pass the nationally based exams in those code disciplines. Um, and so all of that would have to be done within the four year time period. And thank you, Jimmy Moss. I see you out there. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> I can't honestly say that the Building Code Academy, I've spent a lot of time there and it's never been been a, a, a challenge or a chore and, and always a pleasure and left with knowing more than I did when I got there. So always Thank great. You. And then again, anyone who's listening, uh, I am the immediate past president of BBCOA. We accept associate members and uh, would love to have each and every one of you. Our uh, Membership brochure is available on our website, just bbcoa.org. Come on in and give it a look. Hey, Jimmy, this is Kenny Rogers. You're welcome for that setup. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Kenny, I strive just to be like you, man. You're a you're an inspiration <laughs> to me, brother. <laughs> uh, Amanda is curious how many folks on this call are uh, building code officials and to make a note of it in the chat. Got a hand raised from Terry Atwell. Like Mr. Jimmy Moss. I had a question, uh, Katie and Sandy. Uh, how many of the certifications are transferable to uh, other states? Uh, that's a great question. And um, I really don't have an answer to that as the um, Virginia certifications are unique to Virginia. And so it would really be up to the surrounding or, or the individual state to deem reciprocity. Mm -hmm. I will tell you though, that the ICC certification, if you obtain an ICC certification, which you know, we fully support, uh, that is very portable. And there are you know, many, many states that accept and um, recognize the International Code Council certifications. And are there any uh, certifications from other states that uh, the Commonwealth of Virginia accepts? Uh, so we, again, will accept ICC certifications uh, towards the exam requirement for Virginia certification. However, we still will require you to complete the required coursework in that our um, 
courses are relevant to the application of the code here in Virginia, which is different than other states. Anna Mead also said that she had attended the classes uh, through the Code Academy and loved them. So what does that tell you all in our attendees? We talked this morning about, you know, we've got all this great knowledge and these this wonderful legacy of all of this decades of experience and our most experienced have what? Attended classes at the Academy. So right there, that should tell you if you're new into this, you ought to look into these classes. Terry's got his hand raised. Terry, was that uh, just to note that you are a building official or did you have comment questions? That was an error. I don't think I caught that under the feedback. <laughs> I don't know if anybody else did. <laughs> All right. So I, this is Amanda. I have an unrelated comment and question. One of the wonderful things about operating a, in a virtual world is that we have, in many cases, been introduced to people's families, um, kids, spouses, animals. So Katie, let's see the dog. <laughs> if sorry, possible. I don't know where she is right now. <laughs> okay. I'm happy to send over the pictures. <laughs> We'd love to see them. Same has happened to me, Katie. I have a 140 some pound farm dog and he occasionally makes his appearance and makes his demands on screen. <laughs> Mine is only 15 pounds. <laughs> okay. So who else on here has taken classes from the Code Academy? Well, uh, this is where I have. Uh, matter of fact, back in the days, I attended the Corps. Matter of fact, I had to go to Hungry Mother's, Hungry Mother's State Park down in Marion, Virginia for a week. <laughs> I'm telling you, that uh, is a, a famous... What a, what, a, what a place. Earl, that was a famous core class. I wasn't with the Academy then, but people who went to that talk about that still today. <laughs> <laughs> but But... But but one thing about it, Susan, I learned a lot, and um, I think that helped that that helped me to be a better rehab specialist too. Because, uh, you know, I went through the electrical, the plumbing, and I also took the uh, the maintenance. And matter of fact, I took the maintenance all the way through the markup court procedures. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, that that was great. I mean, I had to go in front of a real judge, and we had to plead our case as to why some citizen need to tear their house down or make improvements. And everything had to be by the code. code. And also you had, you know, the defense lawyers and whatnot question you and stuff like that, you know? So it was a great experience. And what I got out of that, you know, I took and put that forward towards some of the things that I was doing when I was inspecting houses and writing work right up and stuff like that. And I think that helped me from not making a lot of mistakes because I was thinking about if I ever had to go in front of that judge again, I'm going to have all my dots dotted and T's crossed. <laughs> so if for those so of you that experience. might be in, for those of you that might be interested in that experience that Earl had, that that um piece of the program now resides in our class called advanced official. 
And so it's geared towards in individuals who are looking to progress in their career. However, we bring in um, an attorney, probably the same attorney, Earl, that you had, Bruce Arkema. And Bruce works with um, a Chesterfield or a Richmond judge um, and another lawyer to create this real life law um, court experience. And it's each case is judged individually on its participants, um, part um, uh, defense. And uh, so you really, it's a great, that's a really great class. But again, you'd want to take core first uh, before you took advanced official. Uh, Cedric Stovall, you had your hand raised at one point. I didn't know if you had a comment. Uh, yes, I was just going to say I took the uh, class too. I took the property maintenance inspector. A lot of legal stuff, but uh, it was a good class. So as I was asking earlier in the day, you know, those of you who, who have been doing this for over a decade to make notes about what you could recommend as we build our next generation of rehab specialists, it sounds like the core class is something that's very beneficial. So please, y'all keep keep notes on that because we're, you know, we're going to continue to talk about what, what we want to add to help build that next generation. Katie and Sandy is the next core class already full and when is it i think katie can get that one yes i i think if it's not already full it might be close to full but um the next available class is going to be on march 8th okay we run we run core classes every couple of months uh, they fill up very fast because they are the mandatory class to take any other class so we do see a higher attendance rate or uh in that class than we do all the others so if you're interested in that then it would be important to take that to register for that class pretty far in advance uh, katie talked about some of our self-paced classes and online we have a self-paced class called um the administrative refresher or chapter one refresher. And that class is built off of the core class. It is sort of the next, it's like if core is the 100 level class, this would be the like 200 level class. However, if you can't get into core, this is a wonderful self-paced class to take because it speaks to all of the things that core speaks about around the enforcement and the relationship of the codes to one another. So if you can't get into CORE, but you're very interested in getting some of the content from CORE, this might be a really great place to start and then get into CORE later uh, to take some of the other classes. This is designed to be a refresher for our code enforcement folks who have not been in CORE in maybe 10, 15 years. However, it would absolutely offer you some valuable information uh, and it is free and it is self-paced, so you can take it at your convenience. Uh, Randolph, you have a question, you have your hand raised or comment? Yes, I do. Um, I actually took a core. I actually was a building inspector for a county in Lancaster, and I took all the courses. But I had a, I had a question for Katie. When I took the course, it's been four years ago. They took back the core manuals and said they had to readdress them, but they never. I never received it back. It was one year they took all of them back once we got them, and they said there was something wrong with them, and we had to send them back. But I never received the new ones. So I was wondering whether or not they have addressed it since. Yes, Randolph, let me take that because Katie was actually not with um, the Academy at that time. So she probably is not aware of this situation. So though that class that you took, that particular uh, print version of the core um, book contains some information in it that should not have been there. And so 
unprecedented. We, we called back all the books. We typically don't do that. Uh, so I apologize. You should have received a new book mailed to you. I am happy to mail you um, a new book. Now, it would be based on today's core, which has been recently revamped, but I'm happy to send you one regardless. Um, much of the content is the same. It just lacks, um, the new core does not have in the book itself the how to pass this test module and it does um but it does have the customer service it does have the history of the code uh, it's just set up a little differently and so if you are interested in that if you want to you know shoot your address or somehow get us your address we are happy to mail you a book sure thanks i appreciate it Here's a, uh, another question. Do you have to take the core class over if you attended another session? So no, you do not have to take it over as long as um, it's within four years um, when, uh, from your application. So um, if you're looking to earn multiple certifications, you only need to take one core class within the four years of application. Any other questions, comments, concerns? fun stories. So Sandy, this is Amanda. How many certified building officials do we have in Virginia right now? Uh, we currently have, um, there are about 3,000 individuals who hold certifications with, with about 5,000 to 6,000 certifications. Now, of those people, not all of those are active. Uh, some of them are retired or um, no longer in the field, uh, but we have 163 um, uh, localities, all of which have certified staff plus our third party and our private inspectors and just interested parties. Okay, thank you. Yeah. These are super great questions and we are, uh, look, I know I am making note of them so that when we build on this presentation, we can include some of this additional information that you've all asked about. So when we give this again, we'll include your great questions. Yes, that's right, Jimmy, the administrative refresher, the one that I just noted about the chapter one or, or um, uh, the admin refresher that is required for code change training. So if you are a, a certificate holder and you are you are required to complete code change training and you are also required to complete the administrative refresher. But for those of you who are not certificate holders, uh, but you are interested in knowing more about that, this class, this uh, module is available to you. Okay, any final questions as we get ready to wrap up? I cannot say enough. Thank you so much, Katie and Sandy. This has been really informative. <laughs> Yay! Um, this, like I said, you know, we, we are trying very um, hard to work towards looking at that next generation and seeing what kind of training um, those folks will need coming into this type of, of career change or, or uh, career mode and even for our, our um, I'm calling you all legacy, even for our legacy rehab specialists, um, you know, it appears that they have all attended your training. So, you know, it shows you just how important it is. So thank you so much for taking the time out. I know you guys are actually in a training this week. So I know you had to pop out in order to do this. So thank you so much. And um, we will put on our website for those 
uh, we're going to put all of, of course, all of the links uh, to the academy, um, the information about the core classes, their contact information. So please check it out because it is very, very worthwhile. Thank you. Thank you, and please utilize Katie and the rest of the staff um, who are great resources for information. But um, I know that I think Katie's offered her, her contact information, so uh, you all have a way to reach her. So thank you for having us. Thank you so much. All right, guys, it is 2.41. Um, we will have a guest speaker up next um, from Energy Solutions, and we're going to take a Let's take a nine minute break and come back at 2.50 when they are they are ready and uh, we'll be up and we'll be listening hey, to Sherry. Them. Yes. When we come back, can we hear from uh, Josh Bowling, who was trying to speak earlier and needed to fix Abs some things? Yes, absolutely. We'll hear from Josh first and then we'll go into um, the session with Energy Solutions. So Great. we'll see, see everybody back at 2.50.